Hello, I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Wald, who has been nicknamed the Blood Detective for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. And Dr. Wald also has several degrees and certifications, including board certifications in nutrition. Dr. Wald, we have some questions that people have sent us through email on today's topic of Lyme disease. Okay, it's always a good one. Now, Dr. Wald, many people seek us out over concerns for chronic Lyme disease. Right. Our email shows that many people want to know what is Lyme disease, mm -hmm. how is it diagnosed, and how is it treated. A gentleman by the name of Edward would also like to know why his doctor does not believe that he has Lyme disease, mm -hmm. even though he has joint pains, weird shooting pains, and crawling sensations on his skin and headaches. Now, Edward's been on the antibiotic doxycycline twice mm -hmm. and has seen no results. Okay, okay. So, uh, number one, Edward, uh, let's let's start with the definition of, of Lyme disease real quickly. We know it's a tick-borne disease, and, and we in this office also check for um, co-infections as well, such mm -hmm. as babesiosis and ehrlichiosis or ehrlichia. So, Edward, you may not have responded to doxy because you may have had a false positive Lyme disease test or maybe a misdiagnosis of Lyme disease, you were given doxy for that, but it didn't handle one of the other tick-borne infections. So if you haven't been checked for other uh, uh, co-infections, then you want to ask your doctor to consider that. Lyme disease is diagnosed mostly through clinical criteria, so it sounds like Edward has many of the symptoms that are consistent with Lyme disease. So if he is in an area where there's Lyme disease as well, or for whatever reason his doctor strongly feels, because there may have been other symptoms and issues other than what Edward was mentioning, that fit Lyme disease, then um, let me go with that diagnosis. Laboratory work is supportive for Lyme disease diagnosis, but it's not uh, required and, and not the main thing that determines the diagnosis. In other okay. words, there are Lyme disease tests. We know that these tests are commonly wrong. They can show false positives, they can show false negatives. So if someone has all these symptoms and they have what looks like a positive test, then you say, oh, well, in context, there's Lyme disease, and then we treat that. Doxycycline is certainly a reasonable way to start with Lyme disease, fine, treatment. Um, but on the other hand, in Edward's case, he's not responding. So he may have false positive tests that look like Lyme disease, but those uh, various parameters measured could be provoked from other infections or even other health problems. So more detail you know, would need to be investigated with our sort of blood detective workup. We're looking for other causes of immune dysfunction. Chronic Lyme disease was mentioned here. In traditional medicine at the time of this interview, chronic Lyme disease is considered a very, very rare phenomenon in traditional medicine. I'm not saying that's what alternative medicine practitioners believe. In fact, that's not what we believe at all. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't a person have a chronic hard-to-kill infection that doesn't respond to one or two courses of, of treatment? So even if uh, this particular gentleman does have Lyme disease, the doxy just may not be the right antibiotic given how long he may have had this infection. If it really has, has penetrated you know, Edward's uh, central nervous system, then he possibly might benefit from intravenous antibiotics, you know, like rocephrin, for example, where doxy just failed to do the trick. Mm -hmm. So we use the, the lab testing as supportive to clinical. You know, if, if, if Edward walked into the office and he had a Lyme disease bullseye rash, well, that's different. It's clearly Lyme disease and which it doesn't even matter what testing say. And uh, again, just for information for, for those of you listening, if you notice a tick on you, that tick has to be on the skin for at least 24 to 48 hours before it can infect you. And um, most of the time, uh, there are no, uh, there are no um, bullseye rashes. So just because you don't have the rash doesn't mean you don't, do not have Lyme disease. But if you have the rash or rashes, multiple rashes, you certainly probably have Lyme disease, but it doesn't rule out other co-infections. So if he was only treated for one infection, that may be the reason why he didn't respond. Now, if people find a tick on them and they have been bit, should they keep the tick to take it to the doctor for testing? Well, uh, practitioners have differences of opinion on that. Uh, on occasion, we've sent ticks out and checked it because patients have said, well, I really don't want to take doxycycline as a prophylactic if this tick does not have Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. It could be a tick that uh, would you know, carry Lyme disease, but it doesn't mean it has to have Lyme mm -hmm. disease. So if a person has that tick, we of course will never refuse to send it out to the laboratory uh, and, and just you know, prophylactically uh, manage them. Okay. And in terms, of, uh, in terms of testing, as I mentioned, testing is not so accurate, and there are specialty labs that claim that there are better uh, band-type tests, that's part of what's called the Western blot, and there's something called PCR testing, which they claim is more accurate, but it's not necessarily true. 
Bottom line is, if someone has symptoms that we think is Lyme disease, we're going to treat them regardless of the testing. Now, the CDC, the Center of Disease Control, had set criteria for diagnosis. Some doctors have been confused with this criteria because the CDC says for a person to be diagnosed with Lyme disease, that's a reportable to them for statistics, they have to have five or more IgG bands in what's called a Western blot test and two of the three IgM bands. So you might have those bands, as I said, from other problems, but bottom line is that will be reported to the CDC. The CDC never meant to imply that you had to have that criteria in order to be diagnosed. So okay. the diagnosis is just a clinical thing. There's all sorts of nutritional things that we can do as well to support someone with Lyme disease, but we do not use nutrition as a sole treatment. So again, lots more on the website at www.intmedny.com on Lyme disease. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. You're welcome.